right, I'm back and I'm better than ever. Um, yeah, I thought I'd use a wrestling reference for me being back. But yeah, so I, I'm I'm back again uh, after two weeks of doing, well, trying to get my life together really. Um, but I'm back, um, so that's why you've seen videos sporadically over the last couple of weeks. Um, but. I should be back onto a regular schedule or as much as I can get back to a regular schedule as I can uh, that, to which that schedule is going to be changing once I go to university but we'll get to that at a later date but yeah we're back at Impact Wrestling uh, we're back with the Bound for Glory series we've got a lot to get done today um, obviously we've got Impact and we've got Explosion yeah, we, we, we've got some good matches building up to, and I'm, I'm genuinely excited for this. Um, I'm excited to get back in. So yeah, uh, if anything happens, I'll show you. If not, we'll, we'll see what the show's like. Right, so I've booked the show. It, I'm really, really happy with it. It took me a lot longer to book this one than usual. Uh, the big reason for that, I've been away for two weeks. Um, and as those of you who've played this game before know, it's one of those you've got to remember everything, uh, all the things you were planning, all the things you've already done. So it took me a lot longer to get back into the swing of things, get back to planning everything, and I've actually planned a lot more than what I'd already planned. So if anything, the show should be better structured in, in from here on out, just than I've ever done, just because of the vigorous planning you, I've had to do, because I've got two hours and you get, I've already got five Bound for Glory matches and there's only room for one of a match each show so trying to calculate all of that stuff you guys don't care about but I thought I'd point it out so let's get into it so we start off the show with a segment where Stephen Armel tells Chris Bay and Willie Mack that they can't do their TLC match that they were going to do and they can only do a tables match due to network dis restrictions so fuck the network uh, that's genuinely what happened um, I couldn't I couldn't do a TLC match or a ladder match to be exact so I went with the tables match but without booking it in basically just imagine that they've used tables that they've used ladders and chairs during the match because we weren't allowed to do it. So they can still use the weapons, they just can't climb and retrieve something from the building because fuck the network. That's how the show starts. Uh, already cursing at the very beginning of the show. And then we've got a 47 rated match between Willie Mack and Chris Bay when Chris Bay put Willie Mack through the table. Uh, he did a stump bump during the match as well, so he jumped off the top of a ladder through the table sending Willie Mack crashing through it, it like just a massive spot so yeah it's a good match actually 47 rated probably could have been a little bit better Willie Mack with 46 Chris Bay with 43 it could have been better but I'm not too disappointed with that 47's not bad at all uh, plus it gets these two on the show and the, as disappointed as I am that it didn't give me the chance to do a TLC match it means that these two could have a round three if they really wanted to uh, or down the line there could be a round three where they do on a pay-per-view get that TLC match they're craving so yeah 47 rated match uh, then we've got a 41 rated segment between Jordan Grace and Madison Rain where Grace tells Rain that she can't start a battle that she's not willing to finish and kind of like aggressively taps rain on the back as she walks out the room kind of reminding rain basically what what she's gotten herself into she started it she's gotta finish it but she's trying to prolong that finish as long as possible whether she manages to just get away with it i don't know but judging by grace's reaction i don't think she's gonna get away with it then we got a 33 rated segment where Jake Chris talks about how he enjoyed seeing Dreamer bleed and that Dreamer deserves everything he's got so far and everything he's going to get. Uh, Jake Chris being very 
cryptic with his reasonings for why he's attacking him. Obviously, last week it was kind of put forward that he's, you know, that he's got he got a segment. So the general belief was that he was going to explain his actions. He's been cryptic with it. You know, he's kind of giving little things, but not giving everything to the fans. Uh, so hopefully, over time. He does give a little bit more to the fans um, as to why he's doing what he's doing. Um, but yeah, so Jake Crisp worked really well with the crowd. Freedom to improvise, that's great to see. Um, I, th I thought I'd test him out. So obviously, he's, he's not amazing at it, um, probably partly due to his popularity, but that's not bad at all. Then we've got a great match between Trey and Ace Austin. Where Trey actually pins Ace Austin out of nowhere. It it comes as an absolute shock. Ace Austin sort of pretty much dominating the match, and Trey just get uh, just hits his finisher, pins him out of nowhere, and it just sends shockwaves. Ace Austin is visibly angry. Um, yeah, a great match, but and great history between the two. But you wouldn't expect to. Trey to get some points out of that. Everyone kind of penciled Trey to get almost zero points before and finish bottom before Young decided to go mental. Ace Austin benefited from having a new hot move. Brilliant. Um, Ace Austin doing really well at the moment. He kind of carried this match, but brilliant stuff. 53 rated. That puts Trey on seven points now. Then we have a 51 rated segment. Wow. Uh, so basically, uh, Shamrock is just battering Moose um, like backstage, around the ring, throwing him into the guardrail, everything. Uh, puts him into the ankle lock, virtually breaking Moose's ankle. And uh, Moose is always visibly crying. In, uh, no, like he's, Moose is this big monster. And all of a sudden, Shamrock snapped and has just sent Moose packing. And it, uh, while Shamrock's holding this, and all of the road agents and everything are coming out to help, um, and Stephen Armel as well, he's just shouting at Moose, Are you afraid now? Are you afraid now? As Moose is just visibly in so much pain as his ankle's almost being broken. Obviously, then Shamrock's pulled away eventually. But oh boy, what a statement Shamrock's just sent to Moose. Absolutely unbelievable statement. Um, and Moose is in a severe amount of pain, to say the least. But yeah, no wonder it gained heat, because and that segment rating was so high. Just the intensity in this segment is just bubbling between these two. And you got to remember that Moose defends his title quite often as well. Um, so he'll probably defend his title before he faces Shamrock. So yeah, 51 rated segment, nice stuff. Then we've got a 44 rated segment uh, between TJP and Brian Myers, uh, aka Kurt Hawkins, uh, where Brian Myers picks up the win against TJP in about 8 minutes. TJP is just, he's hurt, he's visibly hurt from last week, um, he's not good at all, um, and it's just, it's not looking good for TJP uh, at all, you know, Myers has struggled in a couple of matches, picked up, I think, a yeah, he'd only picked up seven points before this, so he's really struggled to pick up points. And TJP being injured has just been easy pickings for him. Um, but yeah, 44 rated segment. I was expecting it to not be very good just because of Myers is in there, as well as the fact that you know it only went for eight minutes. Uh, commentary put over that uh, Brian Myers wanted to move away from. You know, his Kurt Hawkins image, you know, he's, he's the same person, but he feels like he'd succeed more if he said, if he stays true to himself. So, and that is being, not being Kurt Hawkins. He feels that that is holding him back. And it seemed to have actually held him back. You know, he's, he's just picked up a win. Yes, difficult circumstances, but a win's a win. Then we've got a 47 rated segment uh, where... Heath, Rhino and Armel are backstage. Um, Armel kind of ta uh, gives Heath a contract to which he signs. It's a temporary contract and it runs to Prelude to Glory. I wasn't going to do Prelude to Glory, but I felt like it was 
actually a good idea um, and that's where the final of the Bound for Glory series is going to be. Um, so yeah, because obviously sometimes you either have the final of the Bound for Glory series, that Bound for Glory or the winner of the Bound for Glory series being um, in the main event facing the champion. Um, but I thought Prelude to Glory was a good way of doing things and that is where he's got to fight for his job. No no statement on match type, no statement on who he will be facing, no statement on how many people he'll be facing. Stephen Armel is very ominous and is just like, you will just be fighting for your job. You can do whatever you want. You can feud with whoever you want. You can fight. You know, you can have tag matches with Rhino. You can have singles matches with Rhino. You can have single matches with every, anyone. However, at that up until that show, you are free. But on that show you will fight for your job if you lose you're gone so yeah 47 rated segment nice stuff uh, then we've got a 50 rated segment nice stuff between these two Miro and Mar Melissa Santos Miro obviously used to be Rusev and Rusev changes his name to Miro as he doesn't want to be state mistaken as Mr. Nice Guy anymore you know in WWE this whole Rusev day crowd loving him M uh, Rusev turned up well Miro now turned up to impact was cheered by the fans turned on the fans and now has gone no I, I don't want you guys to remember me as Rusev and the you know the happy go lucky guy I, I'm no longer that guy I'm the guy that gets stuff well, that gets shit done and yeah Miro is here then we've got a 51 rated match between EC3 and Carl Anderson where EC3 just picks up the victory against Carl Anderson with the Sweet Meat Sizzler. Really good match between these two. I knew these two would be a solid match. I was expecting about 50 so yeah, and that's virtually what I got. The, these two doing great stuff. Um, they've been solid throughout the whole series. EC3 especially. just pick. He's still unbeaten as well as Rusev. Well, Miro now. That's going to take some getting used to. Um, even for me, let alone you guys. But yeah, EC3 just picking up win after win. Just pinfall after pinfall. 51 rated stuff. Carl Anderson not picking it up, but he still looked good in defeat. Then we've got a 43 rated segment where TJP is being checked on backstage. Uh, Fala Bar is there after his match last week. Um, and obviously his history with TJP. Um, and Ace Austin and uh, Man Man fought and barging attacking both of them. Ace Austin just battering TJP. And it is revealed in this segment on commentary that TJP versus Ace Austin is meant to be happening next week. So it seems like Ace Austin doesn't want any shock victories, uh, well, any shock defeats to happen next week like it did on tonight's show. He wants to make sure he gets those points. And to do that, He's taken out TJP in the process. So yeah, it, mad stuff by Austin, wasn't it? Uh, no one was expecting this to happen, but what a dynamic this would be. It's kind of setting up, could set up a weird tag match ending up being on either Prelude to Glory or possibly even just Explosion. Um, but yeah, some... De that'll be a decent looking match so that's that's setting up for next week between TJP and Ace Austin but it could set up a whole lot more as well then we've got a segment where Eric Young is just seething he's, he's just telling himself to focus and to not get mad because obviously he keeps losing he keeps losing points as well he's, he's telling himself don't get mad don't get mad don't get mad so he's trying to focus himself and his match is next against Doc Gallows. And that match is a 49 rated match where Eric Young actually defeats Doc Gallows with a spike power driver. So the focusing of Eric Young worked wonders. You know, he's picked up a victory. Um, obviously that do doesn't bode well for Doc Gallows either, but that's big for Eric Young. Gets him possibly back in the race but he might be too far behind at this point so yeah he might have to pick up points in that uh, big special match at the end um to stand any chance of you know qualifying but if, if he if he keeps picking up any points then phew, 
he might just put himself within touching distance of getting in there. Then we've got a contract signing for the women's title match which is going to happen next week. And I've decided to put in the title there. There was no attack. It was nice and clean. Diano Prazo was just like, I'm not going to attack you. I don't want you to have any excuses. You know, I will just beat you clean as a whistle. Um, so yeah, Prazo just being very confident. Kylie Ray kind of doubting herself a little bit. She's not quite sure if she can do it, but she's going to try. 38 rated segment there and sets up the women's title match for next week. Then we've got a 46 rated segment where uh, Eddie Edwards congratulates RVD on his win uh, and, you know, grants him the title match at some point. And Rob Van Damme tells him that management will let him return the favour. So, judging by that, it means that RVD is allowed to pick an opponent for Eddie Edwards in the future for Eddie Edwards to have a warm up match against. Not bad, 46 rated segment there. And I think it's the main event now. And it is a 60 rated main event where Sammy Callahan defeated Miro in an absolute shock. You had the shock earlier on in the night with Trey defeating Ace Austin. That this is probably the biggest shock of them all. Sammy Callahan picking up the win with a curb stomp against Miro. He gets straight out of there. Once that pinfall goes down, he runs out the ring as Miro is in utter shock. The crowd are in shock. The commentary don't know what to say. And um, Callahan has a massive grin on his face. He's just picked up the biggest win of his career. Wow. 64 rated in win performance by Miro. 52 by Callahan. I knew it was going to be a good match. But what a match that was. Wow. Yowie wowie. And that means that this show is a 57 rated show. I told you I was happy with it. And it's produced the best rated show we've had so far. Unbelievable stuff to be honest. Um, I was... I was expecting it to be just above. I wasn't expecting, you know, to be that 57. That main event stole it. <sighs> Thank God I put it as the main event because I wasn't going to initially, but I knew them two would pull it out of the bag. Great stuff. Really happy with that show. So, if uh, I go through the table for the Bound for Glory series right now. Right, so here's the fa uh, fancy little graphic. There you go. Um, so... The top of the table for the first time is EC3 with 21 points. He overtakes Miro, who is on 20, still after his shocking loss to Callahan. Speaking of Callahan, he is on 14 points as well as Myers, uh, trying to nick those final spots in that big match at the end. Uh, then we've still got quite a few people on 7 points. We've got Ace Austin, Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, and Trey all on 7 points. Uh, respect, uh, respectively um, then we've got TJP on two points and he, you know he, he's struggling for points especially with this injury I'm not sure if he'll be able to pick up any more of those two points it's not looking great so speaking of not looking great Eric Young on minus three points is looking even worse than TJP but obviously that is because of Eric Young's own stupidity picking up that win this week might just be able to bring momentum back on his side so he can push on and try and get a spot in that final match. So yeah, this Banff Glory series is starting to shape up. People are starting to be on different points. Um, so not everyone's on the same number of points as much anymore. So it's all starting to swap and change and it's only going to continue to do that as the weeks go by. But yeah. Looks good. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think. Uh, who you guys think will be in those final four places. That fatal four way at the prelude to glory. It'd be interesting to see who you think is going to make that. But yeah, that rounds up the Banff Glory series this week. Uh, we'll move on to Explosion. See what happens there. Uh, if anything happens beforehand, I'll show you. Right, so we have some incidents to deal with before Explosion, so let's see what happens. So we've got TJP and Ken Shamrock. TJP was brought before the Vesselous Court, accused of annoying everyone else with his uh, constant boasting and cocky attitude. The judge, Ken Shamrock, found him guilty and sentenced him to remain silent for the rest of the night. 
and then buy drinks for everyone. Oh, nice. So, not too bad there. Small positive impact on TGOP. Not too bad. RVD and Ace Austin. Uh, Rob Van Dam has taken Ace Austin underneath his wing as a protege. Um, oh my god. That is awesome. That is actually awesome. That could... I'm already a massive fan of Ace Austin. If RVD can push a few of Ace Austin's attributes up, that's just going to benefit him so much. Brilliant. Happy with that. Right, I'll book the show and then show you what, what happens. Right, so I've booked the show. Uh, I'm actually... It's just, I think, one of my better explosions. Again, um... I genuinely think I'm starting to get into the swing of things. It's just that starting period is so difficult to make sure you've got all these different storylines, this, that, and the other. I'm starting to hit the ground running now. So, yeah, let's have a look. Let's start the show. So, we'll start off with a 51 rated segment where uh, Melissa Santos reveals that this current top two will face each other next week aka on impact in the bound for glory series which is miro and ec3 51 rated segment miro and ec3 kind of have a standoff um backstage uh, while this is being announced so yeah that is the main event for impact so that's something to look forward to next week uh then we've got a 37 rated segment where fella bar uh, tells uh, fulton that he can't wait to kick his ass later on so that's the main event of Explosion. Before then though, we've got a 40 rated match between Tennille Dashwood and Kira Hogan. Uh, where Tennille Dashwood defeated Kira Hogan with a roaring elbow. Tennille Dashwood with 43 rated, Kira Hogan 31. Not too bad at all. 40 rated segment which is better than I thought it was going to be to be honest. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Then we've got uh, the Desi Hit Squad attacking the Motor City Machine, Gun uh, Motor City Machine Guns. Motor City Machine Guns backstage where Mah Mahabali Shera just destroys him. So obviously, naturally, Raj Singh and Rahit Raju, they are like the main two in the tag team that are just, you know, beating, you know, beating them up. And then Shera comes in and he just dominates. He's throwing them left, right and centre and just leaves them on the floor absolutely battered. So, yeah, that's kind of how this feud's going to go now, is um, these two aren't going to face each other for a little bit longer, uh, just to prolong things, just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, but, yeah, so I reckon there's going to be singles matches between Shelley and Sabin and Shera, um, just to kind of prolong the feud a little bit, and that's how we, this, and this is a good segment to get us there. Then we've got a 40 rated segment where the North are angry about getting pinned and tell the Rascals that it means nothing. That, that it just, it literally means nothing at all. They may as well just not say anything because it's just, it literally means nothing anymore. Uh, then there's a segment where Johnny Bravo buys all three of them, aka Ty Valkyrie himself and Rosemary, all matching shirts because he just wants them all to be so good friends and naturally they don't look too happy but they put the shirts on anyway so yeah just th this few could last i say few this, this storyline could last forever in my mind that it genuinely could <laughs> so God, i've got so many ideas and silly little things johnny bravo can do and what these two can do um during it so yeah okay um i went back to see to check on things um and now it's kind of skipped the falabar match uh and man, man fulton basically what between them two it was a draw it was a double count out um between the two um so yeah it's kind of they were battering each other so much that they were both just laid out. They put each other through the barricades, this, that, and the other, and they both just got counted out. They hate each other that much. So, naturally, that's setting up future matches between the two. But it's just to get there, I had to put them in a match in general. So, yeah, them two both getting a double count out finish. So, let's finish the show. So there's a 40 rated, seg uh, 40 rated show for Explosion, not too bad at all, some good segments in there, a couple of good matches actually, 
better than I thought they'd be. Um, so yeah, we're getting into the swing of things now. So hopefully over time, it can just start improving. But I'm really happy with that. So yeah, that that's the end of uh, this episode. Obviously, naturally, just uh, slowly, just getting better. The shows are just slowly lifting up, slowly getting better over time. We've got some really good rivalries coming along. We've got some great cards for the pay-per-views as well. It's all looking great. So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you guys are happy to see the return of um, the return of. TEW and hopefully yeah we can we can start cracking on again and um, now I'm in the swing of things so yeah hit that like button if you're happy to see this back and just happy to uh, just happy with the show really uh, comment anything down below I do read and respond to them all um, and they're all very very helpful um, especially if it's like oh the, this would be a good storyline or I think it could go here. I want to know who you guys genuinely think are going to be in those final four spots in the Banff Glory series. Who are going to be in that fatal four way at Prelude to Glory. I want to know. Uh, so please tell me in the comments who you think. Uh, if you're new here please subscribe. We're just getting started so you're not, you know, you're not too far behind. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Nice to see you in the next video. See ya!